He defies stereotype. A doctor who never set out to become one. An inventor who early on never fancied engineering. A successful businessman who never aspired to be an entrepreneur. And a leading endovascular innovator who's out to do away with his profession's most beloved tool. Well, he is from Texas. Growing up as a uh, Simpson lover, Texas, yeah, I was going to be a veterinarian, but I had uh, incredible allergies to animals, so uh, horses, cats, dogs, and uh, it made it almost impossible uh, to be a veterinarian. But for a young John David Simpson, hay fever was not the lone downfall of his vet school ambitions. I uh, went to a Texas Tech for two years as a pre-vet major in agriculture. I uh, moved out of Lubbock and then went to Ohio State again as a pre-vet major. Uh, I, I thought I was a very good student and uh, a very motivated student. I did not have great grades. Uh, and vet schools are very competitive. Uh, I think sometimes even more competitive than medical schools, so it was tricky. I never got into vet school. I tried several times. Went to graduate school uh, and then eventually went to medical school at Duke. Uh, while I was there, every rotation that I went through, that's what I was going to do. And my last rotation was cardiology. And uh, I'm not sure that's the real reason that I went into cardiology, but it was very exciting to me. And when I finished, I said, okay, good. This is what I want to be a cardiologist. John moved to California and began his cardiology training at one of the cardiovascular meccas, Stanford University. While well, I was a cardiology fellow at Stanford, uh, and I was finishing my cardiology fellowship looking for a job, had accepted, accepted a job in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, I saw a, a posting one day uh, that there would be a lunchtime presentation from a German physician, Andreas Grenzig, who was going to talk about blowing up balloons uh, in arteries to make them better. And it sounded, it sounded crazy to me, but I decided I would go hear the, uh, the presentation. I took my sandwich in to listen to the presentation and left the presentation thinking, wow, uh, this is amazing. I remember calling my wife and telling her that, you know, I, I just heard something and, and I think that uh, this man could potentially revolutionize the treatment of vascular disease or he's going to go to jail. And I kind of favored jail. John was so inspired by Grunzig's presentation that he withdrew from his job opportunity in Mississippi and asked his superiors at Stanford to fund a trip. Of course, all in the name of research. So they, they thought that I uh, wanted to go to Switzerland in the winter on a ski lark, and they were not willing to fund it. Well, I went to see him work. I saw arteries go from 99% narrowing down to 50%. And I thought, that is just so amazing that, you know, all vascular disease has just been stamped out slight uh, mis mis uh, interpretation on my part, but he was a very compelling, honest, aggressive, forward-thinking uh, individual. We came back, we ordered the system uh, from Schneider Catholic Company at the time, uh, but they delivered the system with everything that we needed except for the balloon catheter. We had the guide wires, the introduction of the sheets, the inflation device, but we did not have the balloon, which uh, made it very limiting since then we uh, cannot test any balloons, which is our, our sole goal at the time. So we, we decided, well, out of desperation, then we'll try to build our own. Had they delivered the system, I would have never been an entrepreneur. I'm absolutely certain of that. With the help of his father, John took to the den of his house and began developing a balloon catheter with its own unique applications, common to the practicing cardiologist of the day. At Stanford, I was trained to use movable guide wires in all of our catheters, and we incorporated that into the design of our angioplasty catheter, which differentiated it from the Grunzig system, which had a fixed guide wire. The Simpson over-the-wire design caught the attention of industry. John agreed to meet with one group, USCI, and exchange ideas. So I went through in great detail everything you could imagine about the design of our device, the polymers that we used, what we used to expand it, 
how we created the balloon, um, how we sealed the end of the balloon over the uh, inner lumen and, and give them a, a really vivid description of the device. It took about an hour and a half. And then it became their turn and I said, so, so where do you stand? And they said, well, actually, we haven't done anything yet. So it became apparent to me that uh, I had just made the most fundamental rookie uh, mistake uh, that anyone could ever make probably in the space. I haven't made that mistake again. Uh, I'm a slow learner, but once I learn it, then, uh, then I get it uh, at that point. So we laughed, we didn't do anything together, and then two weeks later it's announced that they have signed an agreement with Andreas Grinzig, and they've been working with Andreas for a long time. So it was a, uh, one of those sort of clarifying moments maybe in the business space. Simpson took the business lesson to heart. He partnered with leading venture capitalists and entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley, creating advanced cardiovascular systems. The Simpson-designed ACS balloon catheter became the preferred device for the burgeoning practice of angioplasty. An untapped innovative talent was revealed. And Simpson, having witnessed firsthand the shortcomings of balloon angioplasty, set out on another venture that would deal with a new issue in cardiology, restenosis. I just became convinced that there's so much atherosclerotic plaque, the plaque burden, let's say, within the vascular space is so enormous that we'd be better off if we could take it out still. John developed a device coined the directional atherectomy, which employed a side-cutting rotation cutter affixed to a balloon catheter. He and his partners founded another successful venture, Devices for Vascular Intervention. I thought it was something extraordinarily special. It was the only device at the time that would clean an RGI, yeah. but cumbersome to use. Um, a little big, a little bulky. You really had to work at it to kind of make it do what you wanted to do. It wasn't uh, user friendly. Um, had multiple elements to it, one of, them, one of which was a balloon, and the balloon then also uh, created angioplasty effect or barotrauma uh, to the arteries that we're trying to treat. So, so I think DVI got a fair shake in the time that it was being developed sort of ran into the stent mania, uh, if you will, and uh, wasn't very competitive at that time. Stent mania did indeed take over the cardiology field, even spreading into other specialties, such as radiology and vascular surgery. Suddenly, stent implantation became the preferred treatment for arterial stenosis. But new challenges arose. And of course, John had a solution that had roots to his early outdoor life in Lubbock. But in the early days of stenting, anticoagulation uh, regimens were very aggressive uh, in an attempt to prevent the stents from clotting off. And these very aggressive anticoagulation regimens um, led to a lot of bleeding complications associated with the puncture sites in the, in the uh, artery. So some way to manage the arterial access site, maybe just with a simple suture, uh, became very appealing. So the clinch knot that is used to tie a, uh, a fly uh, on a, a trout line uh, is the same knot that we use uh, literally to, uh, to tie uh, the uh, per-closed suture uh, in place. And uh, was inspired while I was fishing with that anesthesiologist to say, you know what, you should use the clinch knot to tie your per -close. Knots, uh, too, because we're trying to push a square knot. It wasn't working very well with the clinch knot. It's a modified clinch knot uh, for the purists uh, who do a lot of fly fishing. Uh, and it's very effective in closing an arterial access site. In a relatively short period of time, John had gone from a junior cardiologist on the Stanford staff to an internationally recognized innovator in endovascular intervention and three of his first device firms were purchased by major corporations for nearly one billion dollars. I love the invention process. I love to see patients get better. Uh, there are people that allege that it's not true, that I just did it all for the money. Uh, I personally think that's really the case. I, I, I do believe that the seeing the patient benefit is a powerful driver for me. I think without patient benefit, I, I don't believe that I, I wouldn't do it, I don't think. I always told all of our engineers this, that if your primary motivation is to improve patient care, you can build a really good business around it. If on the other hand, your primary motivation is to make a lot of money, 
uh, you don't really care about the patient outcomes, you will absolutely lose your shirt. And there were more challenges for John to tackle. He founded cardiovascular imaging systems, creating the CVIS intravascular ultrasound technology, which allows interventionists to evaluate arterial lumens. He created the front runner catheter to address the problem of chronic total occlusions. And he also went back to the drawing board on one of his early ideas, firmly believing that there was a better percutaneous treatment for artery stenosis than stenting. In spite of the successes of stenting, uh, I, I remain convinced that plaque excision would be a better alternative in many patients. Then if you can remove the plaque without disturbing the other elements of the artery, then would you not try that first before you put in a prosthesis like a stent? That's always been my position. It hasn't really changed uh, today. And I think that all the patients should at least have attempted initially uh, clearing the plaque burden from the artery first. That should be the first objective. I won't build me house on high ground. The new excision device called the Silverhawk has demonstrated promising results in the difficult to treat peripheral arteries. Really the limb salvage thing just absolutely gets me. We used our device to save my uh, aunt's leg, scheduled for an amputation in Abilene, Texas. Uh, found out about it, transferred it to Roger Gammon in Austin. Literally just absolutely saved the leg that they had planned to amputate the next day. Uh, we've had similar experiences with patients uh, in, in hospitals all throughout the country. And it's really emotional. It's, it's, like, a, uh, it's like every physician's fantasy. Uh, to participate in life salvage or limb salvage is like it, it is extraordinarily special. I think I've, uh, I think this is fine. I personally believe this is enough. I've seen patients walk out uh, of a hospital uh, one day when the day before they were supposed to get their leg amputated. It's just mind boggling uh, to me. And even though few have achieved as much as John in his career, with success, has come criticism. There will always be detractors. I mean, there's still detractors for, uh, for everything that we're doing uh, in the vascular space. I, 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 don't, I don't worry about the detractors. I, I criticize stenting all the time. Uh, criticisms of the technology are always welcome. And it's our job to prove that our technology is good enough to make a real difference for the patients, and then we win. I think for me, the, the way this all happens is you have to persevere. It's all about trial and error. You try something doesn't work, try something better, you think it doesn't work, try something you hope better than that, still doesn't work. Keep trying to make it better, and then all of a sudden, aha, now this works, okay, now, you know, this, this, this could be really good. I'm a treating doc, and I love it. And I'm a treating doc first, and that's what's made me really a success. I've never deviated from being a treating doc. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand in honor of a visionary medical devices creator persistent pioneer in interventional cardiology, iconoclastic innovator in peripheral vascular treatment, and founder of world-class companies, Dr. John B. Simpson.